So where's the most accurate place you can put your Freestyle Libre, your Dexcom, your Medtronic Guardian? Where in the body are you going to get the most accurate readings? Now I should put the disclaimer, you should always put the sensor where the manufacturer suggests. So for Freestyle Libre, that's just the back of the arm. For the Dexcom, it depends which country you're living in in the UK. If you're 18 or over, they suggest either the abdomen or the back of the arm. Here in the US, they're only suggesting the abdomen. Now that doesn't mean people don't put it in other places. That doesn't mean you can't get accurate readings in different locations. It essentially just means there hasn't been enough studies for these companies to suggest elsewhere. So let's talk about a few independent studies that have been done talking about different places to put these sensors and the accuracy you can obtain placing it in different locations of the body. So before we get started, I just want to make sure you're familiar with the term MARD, which is mean absolute relative difference, because I'm going to be talking a lot about this. And essentially, this is how we state how accurate a sensor is. The lower the number, the more accurate a sensor is. So the first study involved 20 different participants, all type 1 diabetics, all wearing the Freestyle Libre system. They placed the sensor in three different areas of the body, the upper arm, which is where Libre suggests, the lower back, as well as the chest. They compared these readings in these different areas to a venous blood glucose sample, and then they saw how accurate they were in these different areas. So let's take a look at the results in the three different areas. So the first test was after a meal. So they checked the glucose levels after a meal with both the venous blood glucose as well as checking on the Freestyle Libre. So we can see here on the back of the arm, the MARD, remember the lower number, the more accurate. Back of the arm was an 8.2%, which is very good. The back was an 11 and then the chest was an 11.3. So in this test after a meal, you could see the back of the arm was the clear winner, the most accurate. Then they did an exercise test, which CGMs are notorious for being very inaccurate during exercise. But with exercise, the arm was up to a 13.1 MARD, the back was an 18.6, and the chest was a 15. And then finally, they did a test under a different temperature. So they applied some ice to the surrounding area to see how accurate these CGMs are under different skin temperatures. So we can see the arm was still doing fairly well at a 10.5, the back was a 14, and then the chest was a 13.8. So in this test, we can see the clear winner was the back of the arm. The back as well as the chest did not fare as well as far as the MARD readings as the back of the arm. That was the clear winner in this study. So the second study was based out of Belgium. They had 23 different type 1 diabetics. They were using a Freestyle Libre system on three different areas of the body. The upper arm, like in the first study, as well as the abdomen and the upper thigh. We can take a look at the results here. We see the arm did fare the best. It was an 11.8 MARD. The abdomen was an 18.5, so quite a bit higher. And then the thigh was actually a 12.3. So again, the clear winner here was the arm, but the, the thigh actually fared pretty well. I would say well enough that if you wanted to use the thigh, in real world, those few tenths of a point different than the back of the arm isn't going to make enough of a difference. I think it actually fared pretty well. And here, while the arm was the winner, I think the thigh was close enough here if you decided you wanted to as far as the, the results of this accuracy test. Now let's talk about a couple different tests involving the Dexcom, both the G6 and the G7. Okay, the third study involved 32 different patients. These all happened to be pregnant women in the study, and they were using a Dexcom G6. Now the three locations that they used was the abdomen, the upper arm, and the upper buttock. They compared these readings for 10 days to venous blood glucose samples to see the accuracy in the different readings. Now there was a number of different tests that they did. They measured the reading every single day, and if you want, I'll leave a link to the study where you can actually go through the specifics. But in the end, they found the accuracy overall for the upper arm was an 8.7, which is very good. The abdomen was an 11.5 and the upper buttock was an 11.2. So again, I keep saying the same thing, but the upper arm seems to be the most accurate area. This is another study that proved that to be the case. Let's go on to the final study. This was actually done with a Dexcom G7. So as of the time of this recording, the sensor is not out yet, but this sensor will be out in the next few months. It was already cleared in the UK and should be uh, cleared here in the US soon once the FDA gets the approval. So this was a very recent study just done, just done a few months ago. This was actually the largest of all the studies. It involved 316 participants. It was both type 1 and type 2 diabetics using the Dexcom G7 system. Now they only placed the sensor in two different areas and that was the back of the arm and the abdomen. At the end of the study, they found the arm was an 8.2% MERD, which was the best of all the studies that we've discussed so far. And then the abdomen was a 9.1, which again is still very good. And this is their new system. This is the G7. This has better accuracy than some of the other ones. But again, the same thing that we've talked about for the four studies that I've discussed today. And really, these are the main studies that are out there. You can kind of go through and see what's, what's out there. But these are the ones that I found. And it seems like every study proved it to be the same thing. That the back of the arm seems to be the most accurate place to put your sensor. Now again, follow the manufacturer's suggestions. I'm not telling you to put it elsewhere. 
If your manufacturer does not suggest putting it on the back of the arm, probably shouldn't. But as far as the studies that were done, even one done for the new Dexcom G7, it seems like the back of the arm seems to be the most accurate place to put your sensor. I'll leave links again to all of the studies if you wanted to check them out yourself. I hope that was helpful and let me know if you found anything different. I know real life sometimes can be different than what we find in these studies. There's a lot of different variables. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much again.